Welcome to Fond du Lac's Fee to Trust experience or death by PowerPoint. Fond du Lac's original boundary contained 125,000 acres as determined by the 1858 survey. Due to human frailty and geometry when not doing the math, the original boundary excluded the rice lakes, i.e. the Fond du Lacers kitchen and pantry. The second survey done in 1860 to include the rice lakes reduced the acreage to the present 100,000 acres. Fee lands are grouped together into priorities with similar characteristics, such as by county, by existence of structures, by legal descriptions, problems, Indian versus Indian became fee in 1920 and not recorded. Claims list, a cloud on the title listed on the federal register, fractionated interests, no patent, nobody owns the land, or it's not in TAMS, but there's a signed trust deed by use, whether it's commercial or residential or woodland, by major purchase, Carleton County Exchange, legacy funds, or by off reservation, is it contiguous to the reservation boundary or not? Fond du Lac controls 400 and, excuse me, 45,500 acres, 20,000 of which are in current fee to trust st status and in the project. We have converted about 5,500 acres into trust status, and these are fully finished, as can be seen by the uh, summary report. 6,000 acres are in trust with or without an ID, tract ID, and then they're partially finished. 15,000 acres have been sent to BIA. 18,000 acres have been sent to the fee to trust lawyer. And 19,000 acres are finished or are being worked on by Fond du Lac. So now listen up. You got to get yourself organized, otherwise you're going to have a real mess. I've started by organizing the land purchases, color-coded files for purchases, lease, and assignments, and etc. And a systematic labeling for easy retrieval. Everything's on the left, files are on the right. Minimum required documents are a deed, title insurance, policy, and or abstract. Other documents are purchase agreement, resolution, correspondence, and miscellaneous. I set up a tracking system so I know where everything is. It's in an access database. Each parcel gets its own data or its own data line. Some of the attributes are priority, town range section, tract ID, pin number, acres, abbreviated legal, purchase date, property line issues, receive title policy, deed recording number, deed sent to lawyer, date, excuse me, date sent to lawyer, date sent to BIA, date trust complete, date recorded, tract ID number. And all these are sorted by priority and then by town range section and by parcel ID number. We have a completion report, the date it's sent to lawyer, date sent to BIA, date fee to trust, deed signed, date recorded. That's when it's finished. It's not finished until the tract is recorded and mapped in my system. More tracking is by uh, ownership maps, current photos, et cetera. The tract ID is the label used in the GIS to show parcel that the parcel is not in trust. Gilles show nothing has been done. Dates show that it is complete. Priorities are summarized to know where they are in the process. There are four categories, completed, at BIA, at the fee to trust lawyer, and at Fond du Lac. 
at Fond du Lac within each priority split into longest and shortest time held by Fond du Lac. The longest time is 103 acre years, excuse me, and the shortest time is a quarter of a year. Why so long? People forget. Previously, no GIS or system to track these things. At the fee to trust lawyer, on average, it takes about one year. At BIA, on the average, just about 3.4 years. Expect BIA turnaround to be much better now that Fond du Lac is part of the fee to trust consortium, i.e. we are paying BIA to do their job. This is a special group that only handles fee to trust. And over the past year, they've been pretty good at uh, doing their job. Priorities range in size from 0.11 acre to over 3,300 3, acres. The length of a time by priority is weighted by the number of acres. Each priority re receives its own digital folder and within each folder, each item has its own folder. As you can see, we have a map, overview map, ownership maps, current area photos, historical area photos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Each priority receives its own three ring binder. Most priorities require more than one two and a half to three inch binder. Each item task has its own tab. Completed tasks are recorded in the index as they are completed. A quick visual to tell me what is done and what needs to be done. An ArcGIS extension was created to automa automate map creation. The table of contents of layers shows the needed needed maps in the needed ah, excuse me table of contents of layers in the needed map. A definition query used to select desired priorities is over on the is in the upper right hand corner, and the fee to trust map manager is in the lower right hand corner is used to add elements to the map. We have map type, map title, image source, output options, input layers. This produces a series of sectional maps with location of parcel within each section and FDL, as can be seen with the map. Now let's get into the details. Hold the boa constrictor by the neck, it feels cool and clammy. Overview map shows the location of the parcels in the current application. A section photo map showing the location and details of the parcel. Listing of historical aerial photos from 1940 to 2015 are also uh, created. an original historical photo map from 1940. Maps were changed from showing four sections in one photo map to one section per photo map after we proceeded for some time. We do an environmental assessment. This is the worksheet. It's used with walkovers. Lands are usually walked over at time of purchase Lands with buildings are visited more intensely than woodlands. This form is updated when BIA needs an updated phase one, in which case the parcels are field visited along the roads and trails where people have access and can dump stuff. Forested lands can be assessed using current aerial photos. Fond du Lac's wildlife biologist signs off on threatened and endangered species assessment. Fond du Lac uses the Fish and Wildlife Service Services Threatened and Endangered, spe endangered Species listing. We obtained that from their website. This is an old listing which 
is updated on the website. Invasive species comes from the Minnesota Invasive Species Listing and from Fond du Lac's Invasive Species Eradication Program. Those are those red spots in the upper left-hand corner of the map. Invasive species legend, buckthorn, tansy, and wild parsnip are of most concern to us. Penguin poo has a very uniquely exquisite aroma. Before and after leaving the boat for land, our boots had to be washed to prevent transporting invasive species. A survival suit is needed before kayaking with the whales. FEMA flood plain report identifies lands within the flood plain. The FEMA flood plain map shows the lands within the flood plain. St. Louis County is mapped by FEMA while Carleton County is not. Wetland report identifies the existence of wetlands or not on parcels priorities. Wetland map, wetlands map comes from Fond du Lac's update of the National Wetlands Inventory map. The, the polygons that are in a green stripe are wetlands. Piranhas are only dangerous during the dry season when they are trapped in isolated shrinking pools. They make a tasty meal. Well data comes from Minnesota DNR data. Survey maps comes from the Soil Survey Geographic Database. Each county has its own soil survey key. That's the end of that one. Three, two, one. Soil erosion report is created following the environmental site assessments. Cultural assessment report identifies if the property has characteristics similar to the properties that do have cultural resources. Resume. The person who signs the phase one must have the proper credentials. We have six other people who produce reports for the phase one. Only one person who signs the phase one is required to show their resume. Ground photos show in detail what is happening on the ground. In this case, we have a trash uh, refrigerator, railroads, and a uh, cabin. And many times we just have forest. It's best to take pictures not in winter. The average January temperature in north central Mongolia is minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit and dips to minus 40. The X3 questionnaire and landowner interviews states that the applicant doesn't know of any financial liability due to environmental cleanup. The fee to trust interview log shows who was contacted and their relationship to the land. They are usually adjacent landowners. Telephone numbers come from Public Records 360 internet site. This is a paid subscription. Most of the time there's there, are val there is a valid phone number. If no valid phone number, then move on to the next parcel. The, the interview map shows the owners of the adjacent lands. Only one person needs to be contacted or attempted contact. Fee to trust parcels completely surrounded by trust land do not need adjacent landowner interview. The adjacent landowner interview form, the adjacent landowner needs to be asked if they know of any chemical spills on the parcel going into trust. 
the current owner, Fond du Lac, is asked if they know of any industrial, chemical, junk, et cetera, activities on the land. Asking if the land is contaminated, which will need fixing. The MPCA radius map shows facilities with hazardous waste permits within one mile of each parcel. The underground storage tank leak map shows properties one mile radius and underground storage tank leaks. Contaminant sources as they relate to the parcels going into trust. Every parcel needs a deed. Watch out for bad legal descriptions with your parcel and, with your parcel and adjacent parcels. Overlaps and gaps are bad. Fixing them and fixing them slows down the fee to trust process. This is very important to make sure that the legal description is correct. A word document listing the fee to trust parcel number, the county PID number, previous owner and legal description is provided to assist those further along the process. When the fee to trust lawyers and BIA don't have, then the fee to trust lawyers and BIA don't have to retype the legals. Generally, the legal description should match what's on the deed. Also, usually states the amount of acres, more or less. The deed recording number key provides a visual and index of the parcels and their county recording number. The fee to trust lawyer provides the warranty deed from Fond du Lac to the US of A and trust for Fond du Lac to be signed by Fond du Lac. This is created after any legal description problems have been fixed. A property tax statement is provided for each parcel. The canceled check verifies that the taxes were paid up to the taxes are paid up to date. An itemized taxes paid receipt is also provided. It lists each PID, priority number, and amount paid by parcel. This information is collected once a year when taxes are paid. These data are entered into an Excel spreadsheet and are used to track taxes over multiple years. It helps justify belonging to the fee to trust consortium. A CADEX checklist. A no answer on the items on the checklist means no more environmental review is needed. A CADEX is allowed for land transfers. Certificate of inspection and possession certifies that fully formed, that fully informed about boundaries, lines, and corners of track. No work done in the past 12 months that would create an, a lien no adverse possession by others, no outstanding unrecorded deed, mortgage, or et cetera, adversely affects the title. No water rights, ditches, exploration, possession, possessionary rights by a third party. There are no unrecorded outstanding rights. Partial is unoccupied except as noted. This must be signed by BIA or a tribal employee of a different band or tribe. The field solicitor believes that there's a conflict of interest for the band or tribe asking, that is asking for the fee to trust. I believe this is wrong. Outsiders will not know the answer to any of the above points, especially the unrecorded items. A tenant disclaimer states that the tenant has no rights to the land. We collect this document when a new lease is created and recorded in our recording system. Disclaimers are collected on existing leases when needed. Tribal resolution. Notice this resolution has been updated three times. Obtain a signed resolution after the fee to trust lawyers and title insurance policy lawyers have approved of the legal descriptions and any removed parcels have been identified. Notice of application in a Word document 
in BIA format is provided to assist BIA. I use this pre previous to joining the consortium. I don't know if the consortium uses it or not, but we will see. Index of easements. The field solicitor is big, and I mean big, on seeing all easements on fee to trust parcels. The index identifies as which easements go with, with which parcels. This is a railroad easement from the 50th Congress session, number one, 1888. Ra roads might have new easements or they may have very old road, road orders. Title insurance has two parts, commitment and policy. A commitment is temporary and good for two years, needs to be renewed and is presented to the field solicitor who finds objections that need to be fixed before the land can go into trust. A title insurance policy is required for every or nearly so purchase. Therefore, each purchase already has a title insurance policy. The fee to trust application requires a new policy containing all the parcels in the application. A title insurance policy is issued after the field ob solicitor's objections have been satisfied and before the final review by the field solicitor. This may take a long time, so give the title policy lawyer a head start by giving them the same information that is given to the fee to trust application lawyer. They may be two different people. And the field solicitor has a lot of objections that need to go back to the field, to the fee to trust lawyer. So you've got to have your deeds and all that information correct. A title commitment policy has a Schedule A and Schedule B. Schedule A lists the parcels to be insured. Schedule B lists the issues with each parcel. For example, taxes due, reserved minerals, subject to unrecorded overflow rights, access or lack of access. These issues drive the field solicitors nuts. For many objections, a simple letter from the tribe stating that these issues will not interfere with the tribe's operations will be good enough. Other objections, such as overlapping legal descriptions, need to be resolved. A phase one is created after all the above items have been brought together. A phase one has a six month timeline, time life. Under the old system, a phase one was updated whenever BIA felt they needed it, which was when somebody looked at it for review or signing purposes. As you can see, Priority seven was updated three times beyond the original. It is simple to update, but it was annoying to keep updating it simply because it was sitting idle on somebody's desk. It appears the fee to trust consortium will eliminate this issue. The face mask is to reduce breathing dust along a gravel road in Cambodia. A phase two here includes testing for mines placed in fields by the Khmer Rouge. A phase three removes the mines. Once we complete our package, it is sent to our fee to trust lawyer who puts it together in an application package, which I know nothing about. <laughs> the application index appendix lists the showing an application appendix listing showing the source of the items. Red is from Final Act, green is from the lawyers, and blue is boilerplate. A mandatory fee to trust occurs when there are fee interests on a parcel that also has fractionated interests. We have 0 0.06 to 100% fractionated interests on a fractionated track. It doesn't require as much work as a discretionary fee to trust. BIA does not inform county of FIA interests. Obtain fee interests by obtain fee interest by purchase or by quiet title action. 
for Fond du Lac, fee to trust conversion is controversy free for land within the Fond du Lac boundary. Outside the Fond du Lac boundary will cause controversy. The fee to trust fee land contiguous to the boundary or trust land outside the boundary is considered by BIA as on reservation. Non contiguous fee to trust fee land will be much harder to put into trust due to BIA procedures and objections from others. As you can see, we have fee land that is adjacent to the Fond du Lac boundary, and then we have other fee land that is in Duluth and elsewhere. Questions? 